You're up against seasoned players. So go out and play. Hey everybody, welcome to Rockport Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Just don't get hey. Doug jumped mm -hmm. into Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty after mm -hmm. the crazy goatee talk of this and kind of the redemption story that has been Cyberpunk. Yeah. So I think both of us tried like bought this game like two years ago where it was like mm -hmm. dirt cheap because it was just complete trash and I was like, right, yeah. just take it, just take it. It sucks, it sucks. I think we both bought it and played a little bit. But you decided to actually get back into it. So where yeah. are you at now with it? And is Phantom Liberty like the savior of this game and series? <laughs> Yeah, um, we'll, we will do a full review of Cyberpunk. I'll talk a little bit more specifically about Cyberpunk in the future. Um, I liked Cyberpunk. I thought it was pretty good. I And my, my end thoughts when I finished Cyberpunk was like, that was a neat anthology of sci-fi short stories. I, I hope they do a good job on the next one. <laughs> and um, Phantom Liberty is like one of my favorite games. <laughs> really <laughs> like really i was like i was sitting there like looking at like where i would have put this on my chart and shout out to the to whoever commented on our video where they said phantom liberty was like one of their top three games along with armor core six is like all right sure i guess i'll give you it a try and, yeah. you and commenter <laughs> yeah um but no i i love phantom liberty i think it is absolutely excellent i think it is um the game i thought cyberpunk was going to be um, it mm -hmm. just like completely fulfills anything, any sort of like minor issue I had with cyberpunk was just like, oh, they fixed in Phantom Liberty. Um, and yeah, I just, it, it just absolutely blew me away. Uh, the ending I thought was so good, so smart and so, um, not where I thought it was going and they did it in a nice kind of quieter thing that i was expecting i think i think the thing that the whole thing about like phantom liberty in general is like cyberpunk 2077 is like a bit more um kind of like in your face sex drugs it's the future blah blah mm -hmm. blah blah blah. and then this one is just like much more interpersonal relationships kind of talking about that world and that it really sucks for everybody um but i think it just i think it's just like absolutely just killer front to back was pro and it's just just excellent so <laughs> yeah so improvements so where are our improvements yeah. here like what are the things that are better you kind of mentioned that the story is better but like is it because mm -hmm. it's tighter like i think we've talked about that before where a lot of these expansions big dlcs now feel like they're like taking these games and just tightening everything up and kind of fine tuning is it that are there gameplay changes or is it just the whole story in general is what's really putting this above and beyond this game that was fine to yeah. this is one of the best games of last year yeah, I don't want to get too much of the mechanic. I think mechanically it's pretty similar. There's a big okay. 2.0 update that I don't want to get into, but it basically kind of like completely redid the skill chart. So it's a lot more fun kind of building your character. Okay. And that's like a big part of it. Um, but I just think straight up the writing and the situations you get into in, in Phantom of Liberty are just like head and shoulders above Cyberpunk. Um, it's really funny. There's a mission in Cyberpunk that they, they use. Actually, you see a lot of like screenshots from it. It's one of those like early sort of press review um uh, missions and what the mission is is you need to go to this place and essentially buy this like sort of like tech robot that was stolen from these like really scary sketchy sort of um meddled up gang member guys and the whole thing is like you think like during the conversation you might get ripped off but everybody's pointing guns at you it's like really like every dis like as you're going through that like kind of uh, tree of what to say in that mission it's like mm -hmm. all very intense and it's like really really and then like cyberpunk phantom liberty is just all of that all of the time um okay. where it felt it really felt like there were maybe two or three points where i paused the game and really thought about the next thing i was going to say um and not necessarily just from the ramifications but just like how do i want my character to respond to this situation um it also it just the characters are just so much better in this i think i think in the original game um you are a mercenary and you kind of do like a lot of hits for you do a lot of stuff for hire which kind of makes sense like in an open mm -hmm. world game it's like that's why i get a bunch of shenanigans way, yep. yeah yeah and 
it sometimes the stories didn't really make sense of like why a mercenary would be involved in that story. Cause I feel like a lot of cyberpunk 2077 was them trying to like explain the world. So they, they'd show you something that kind of like, ex so you could like, Oh, that's, that's a part of this world. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. And that's why we had this interaction and it felt, and it sometimes it felt like a little bit more like, um, I like sci-fi that's kind of allegorical, but it felt like a little like too allegorical sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, but basically fandom liberty is kind of like assumes, you know, all that stuff. It's like, okay, all of these things exist in this universe. How can we create a, a really interesting story that picks and pulls from the interesting aspects of this universe? That's what's like already pre-established. It's like, yeah, it's like the season two. Like we don't need to, we don't need yes. to introduce you to the world. Yes. We can just dive right in. Here's your deal. Here's the thing. Like, we're not going to spend 20 minutes explaining this, 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 it's, you know, you know that here's the fun. Yeah, exactly. And like, it can just, and it, it, for some reason, like, cyberpunk the, the original game didn't really feel well defined it felt it felt like a game trying to find its way and then this one just like so solidly feels like a um not maybe not original i mean it feels original for sure but it just feels like it's really putting its stamp on what it is mm -hmm. um and like with cyberpunk 2077 you really just kind of felt it like trying to find itself like in like the the missions you would go on they kind of felt like they were clearly done by different writers with different ideas of what cyberpunk this is just like so wholly focused on what you should what you can and can do with uh cyberpunk and it's like it's um it's really neat because basically the so the concept of the story i, guess I was gonna say what fan of liberty <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, dancing around it i feel like yeah yeah so, so okay so the setup for phantom liberty in cyberpunk 2077 uh, you kind of have to understand, like, just the baseline of Cyrus Punk 2077. Um, you implant a chip, chip in your head, and that chip had another personality in it, Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves' character, who is, like, slowly eating away at your brain mm -hmm. and will eventually just replace your body entirely. Um, in the main game, you're just looking for a way to fix that. Um, and there's, like, maybe two or three major options. And then this DLC is essentially, like, a fourth, a third or fourth option. Okay. Um, so it kind of just... Anything that happened in Cyberpunk 2077 up to the point after the point of you putting the chip in your brain, like doesn't matter. Um, it's so wholly separate, which I thought was really interesting. And it all takes place in this town called um Dogtown, which is very much more uh Blade Runner y vibes. Ooh. Um and the concept of the game is it's this like really it's this more dangerous area of the cyberpunk world. It's like um, a lot of like shanties and stuff. Um, super detailed, a lot more fun to walk around in than kind of just the square blocks around the main city. Anyway, the president crash lands in that in that city, very similar to um, oh god, what's that movie? Escape from Kurt New Russell. York. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's very <laughs> similar to Escape from New York, and uh, you get contacted by one of the president's um, let's just say let's say allies, and they're like, if you save the president, I have a way to stop what's going on with your chip and brain and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it just follows that path, and like nothing with the other side, like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. All the main plots are like totally different than that. Um, yeah. So it's just like, it kind of like ignores everything that happened in Cyberpunk 27 in an interesting way. It's just like, here's a whole different game essentially. So is it like an alternate ending? Is that kind of the idea of it or like? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the ending is like completely different than what I got before. So, um, yeah. So it's, it's more so like a, okay, you had paths A and B here. We're yeah. just going to add in a C path that you could potentially take down this road for Phantom Liberty. And yeah. once you pick that path, you're done. The rest of 2077 is out. You kind of go back into the city, but those plots just don't really matter anymore. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's like there's there's the interactions like in the main game of the two sort of like kind of plot decisions you can make really interact back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then this one is just like none of those like <laughs> none of the characters from the original Cyberpunk 2077 are involved like almost at all in the in the plot that's so does it feel does one. it feel like like almost like a new canonical ending to this thing like oh yeah yes like, and that's and that's what i think like is almost really like a like we, we we screwed up a and b like here's c it's nicer it's better we like this better everybody pick c kind of <laughs> <laughs> not to not to like dump on what could potentially yeah. be good for a and b but i haven't played it but <laughs> but but yeah i mean it just because it just does like a lot of the cool cyberpunk things like to the nth degree i think the one thing that's like really cool is that there's like two or three main characters in this new phantom liberty plot and it's really never clear of who's telling the truth and mm -hmm. like who you trust that's where like that's where it's like a lot of decision making is doing along like the tr along the you know the the 
talking trees or whatever you call it, dialogue trees, dialogue trees, is like who to trust when in certain points. And you could always feel that sort of shifting around and you're not quite sure. And they give you reasons like there's a, there's a point where not spoilers. So I was like, I really trusted this one character. And then they said like a line that was really strange. I was like, Oh, everything I knew about this character might not be true. Uh, maybe I should go back to the guys I wasn't trusting. Um, and so it's a lot of like really cool play on that. So it really, and it really does feel like that's kind of what cyberpunk was supposed to be. And we kind of talked about, I kind of talked about something about Baldur's Gate three, re- three review. Um, it feels definitely more in line with that kind of like, no, your decisions really do matter. It really mm-hmm. does feel that way. Um, the thing I really like is that all the decisions feel in, I also, the thing I, they kind of shied away from this in Cyberpunk 2077 that they really went hard into Phantom Liberty is that your character is not a good person. Yeah. Um, and in the original game, you could kind of play like the good guy a lot and it, it didn't really make sense for the character. Um, but I like in this one, you are just a bad guy and you're, but you're making decisions for the situation you're in. Um, so I really liked it's like one of the few games I really felt like I was like role playing the character mm-hmm. as opposed to like, I'm going to be the good guy. It's like, no, my character's not a good guy. My character is like really fighting to survive. Yeah. So if I'm playing a side mission and it goes sideways, like, and now it's like, well, my character would be pissed at this person. So why don't I choose the dialogue that would be pissed at that person? Are they pissed off to kill them? I don't know. Maybe I'll pull <laughs> that back. Um, is is there yeah. a good option or is it like, or is, or are there, you... There are good options, but the good option is not is like to um, not extort somebody for money. Like oh, so, okay. for example, so it's like, like I can like kill you, chop off an arm, or just scold you for a minute. Like none of these yeah, are like or, good things, but yes, exactly. Or like and yes, instead of killing a guy, like I'll have him pay me off. Um, but I I really like that. Not like role play, and again, like your character is a bad guy. Um, but they're not like a psychopath or anything like yeah. that. They're just kind of a jerk. So it was fun kind of playing the jerk. And then that's kind of Phantom Liberty like leans into that. And that's sort of like, it's not really gray because gray is like from light to dark. It's just kind of playing in this like dark area, but it's so much fun doing that mm-hmm. um, and playing that character um, because you could kind of have to let go. I think in this game of like, what would I do in this decision? Because like, unless you're a shitty person, you're not just not going to be in these situations. <laughs> these options don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And so it's, it's, I found it so much more fun instead of playing, pulling back all the time. It's like, well, no, if you push for, and the thing that's fun about the game is it allows you to push in another game would be the bad decision. And this game would be like the second to bad decision. So like in another game, if I call a character an asshole, they're going to be mad at me. But in the cyberpunk world, people are kind of like ribbing each other back and forth all the time. So Mm -hmm. right now, this character I really trust, I'm really mad at them. I can do all my scream and yell at them options, but at the end of the conversation, they still, you still trust each other. Got it. Um, So it's like the writing is just really, really smart in that way where it's not just like, it's not these binary decisions. There are binary decisions, but it really felt like you could really lean into being a jerk and it's still kind of move the story forward in, in like interesting and smart ways. Mm-hmm. How, um, how long is yeah. it? Cause I guess in my mind, and you made the escape to New York analogy, which excellent movie. Absolutely love the movie. Yeah. Fantastic. Not much plot there. Like mm-hmm. is that I'm assuming with the whole Johnny Silverhand and all that other stuff going on, that it gets a little bit deeper. Is it long? Oh, yeah. Is it like, Oh yeah. It's like 30 hours or something like oh, that. Damn. I think it's like 20, okay. 30 hours. Yeah. It's, it's just like a new game. <laughs> That's what it's like really. <laughs> um, and the story isn't just escape from New York. It's like, there's cool James. It's like actually more like a grimy James Bond than it is okay. uh, escape from New York. It's like a grimy James Bond. It's got ocean of 11 stuff. It's got some ghost in the shell stuff, which I really <laughs> like. It's got a lot of, it's just like, it's so firing on all cylinders all the time. of just hmm. like, this is what gritty cyberpunk should be. Um, and it's just absolutely incredible. <laughs> and it's super fun. It's like super, super fun to play too, because all the, all the stuff, all the fixes they made, like playing this, this version of the game versus the one I played, I don't know, whatever, two years, years ago, ago yeah. maybe a year ago. Yeah. It just feels so much better to play mm-hmm. and everything on top of that. Hmm. Yeah. Cool game. <laughs> cool game. Uh, we are workforce gaming. You can subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below. There's a link to support us on Coffee below as well. We'll see you later. Bye.